Gospel of April the 11, 2017 A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out what he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, the son, the son of Simon the Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money back Jesus had told him, buy what we need for the feast, or to give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once. It was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's homily would be entitled, Without the Holy Spirit, we are just dust. We have three persons that I would like to focus on. First, the good news. The love of the Son to his Father and us. One of you will betray me, says the Lord, and everybody is perplexed. And when John asked him, Who is it? The Lord answered, The one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. He had such an intimacy with his twelve that he would share his own plate with them. And Judas took the morsel, and Satan entered into Judas. And the Lord did it on his own free will. And that is why he says, Now the Son of Man is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Because he knows what he is doing, he is allowing Judah to betray him so that his passion might follow out of pure love for you and me, and first and foremost for the Father. Love that delivers obedience. And then we have the counterparts. One of them is a thief. This, and he was consecrated. He was, as it is stated in our canon, in our canon law, he was equal to the, to the bishops, equal to the cardinals, Judas the Iscariot was, consecrated by the Lord, given power and authority to drive out demons and to do miracles. But he rejected the Lord's life. He rather would follow his own heart, and he wanted money, so he betrayed the Lord. How many and how sad it is that we see those ministers of God who betray the Lord, who are not humble, not honest, who use their position of power to destroy others, to steal, to enrich themselves. It's so sad. People that would use their position, even if it's minimal, 
to take advantage of the sheep of the Lord, stealing from them in order to feed their own self and their own satisfaction to no avail. And then we have another, another bad example. He who was called the stone, which I don't like the translation as rock. Kepha is stone, for there is only one rock, and that is Christ. But Kepha is the stone. And Kepha, that is Simon Peter, the first pope, would betray the Lord also. The Iscariot, out of his own interest. Peter, out of fear. We saw last Sunday how when he was in the atrium of Cephas, he would deny the Lord on fear for his own well-being. How many times I would ask myself and ask yourselves if we were to be pressed with some Muslim, some one of those fanatic Muslims that want to kill everyone who is not Muslim, would we still affirm that we are that we're Christians? About a month ago, I had the opportunity to show a movie, The Silence. It's about some Jesuits that were caught and persecuted in Japan. A friend of mine, a brother of mine, an Orthodox priest, asked me to see that movie because he was greatly troubled. And I saw it. And then we commented it. And we came to the conclusion that martyrdom is only for those to whom the Lord would grant. It's not for everyone. Without the Holy Spirit, we are just dust. Let us be afraid and scared. Let us tremble at our wickedness. Our weaknesses and wickedness that falls us, that leads us to death. Only by the loving power of God can we truly be witnesses of the Christ. Let us again pray for everyone for all our brothers and ourselves, as we enter into the most holy of the week, that the Lord might give us His Holy Spirit, so that we might be truly His witnesses. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.